I saw this article, a screenshot of this article headline going around, making the rounds on the Liberty Twitter this weekend. And it's called, it's from the Atlantic. It's called Inflation is Your Fault. And that is one that I just saw posted around everywhere. And it's from, it's from the Atlantic. They're pretty good at uh, coming up with these attention-grabbing headlines. A lot of times, all you see are their headlines. There's, they're the ones that had that uh, Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty uh, article headline, of course. And so they're great at doing this. This one's by Annie Lowry. So, of course, as we're dealing with inflation still, which is just a little over 3%, it's it's no 9.1%, but it's still uh, 50% higher than what the Fed wants it to be at our 2% target rate. So we're all still dealing with that. And uh, Annie over here at the Atlantic has got an idea, and she's she's found the, the problem and the solution to the problem, I guess. But who are you going to blame for this inflation? Well, it's you. It's you, dear listener, listening right now. Uh, the inflation that we have, it's not the money printing. It's not the out-of-control spending by Congress. It's, it's nothing like that. It's not, the, it's not shutting down people's jobs during the pandemic and giving them money, unemployment, uh, instead of allowing them to produce things for the economy. It's, it's your fault that we have this inflation right now. Could be a dumb bleep. Submission for Dumb Bleep of the Week, I'm sure, but I wanted to talk about it today since the article just came out over the weekend. The uh, the byline here, or whatever it's called, what do you call the subheadline? If people are so mad about high prices, why do they keep buying so many expensive things? So you might think, well, because when I first saw this, I was like, okay, she's got a little point. Like there's a point. We're still buying a lot of things. Consumers are out there spending at record amounts, and you see some clothing that you want, even though it's uh, pricier than you than you uh, used to pay for it. You're still buying that, or you go out to um, you go to McDonald's and you're paying higher prices, or you go to Panera. My wife's been on a Panera kick lately, and we've been going there. And holy crap, it's you might as well be going to a normal sit down restaurant. It's so expensive to go eat at a place like Panera. And uh, so you might think, well, if I've really got a problem with those prices, then I just, I wouldn't pay that price. Therefore, like there's a market argument here. There's a market argument here to be made where she has somewhat of a correct point for a moment that since I'm deciding to still pay that much for the food, or I'm deciding to still pay that much for the clothing, that I have agreed that this is a fair market price. Otherwise, I wouldn't pay for it. But what about the actual inflation itself? Like, is that really our fault that those prices went up to where they are? In the market auction theory, it can be. With the inflation rate number, though, it's a little bit different because the things I just mentioned, like one thing for sure, clothing, uh, that's a very, very small portion of the inflation number that we have. Uh, In this article, she mentions uh, cruise vacations, things like that, another very small portion of the inflation number. Uh, but let's let's read a little bit of the article and uh, and see what we got here. And like t up saying, does the market agree to inflation? Like, do, do I really agree to it? To an extent you do, if you buy things that you don't actually need or that you could, like, if I could make food at home for cheaper, of course, that comes with, a, with its own costs as well. Uh, did I need to buy the new clothing that I bought? Uh, could I have said that's too expensive? I'm just going to wear the clothing that I have right now. Like for those things, you're kind of agreeing that the higher price is worth it for you to pay those. But then when it comes to to housing and food in general, like even food at the grocery stores, uh, you got to eat something. And so you're going to pay whatever the higher price or starve, right? Uh, so you don't have a, a lot of say so in the inflation in those numbers. So there, there's kind of a balance there to it, I think. Uh, she says, you would think with prices as high as they are that Americans would have tempered their enthusiasm for shopping as of late, that they would have pulled back spending on luxury items, that they would have sought out budget and basic options, bought smaller packages, fewer things. Now she mentions luxury items once again, and those are going up a lot, but those are also a very, very small portion of the inflation number. We'll look at some of that later on. This is not what's happened. Consumer spending rose 0.2% after accounting for the higher prices in October, the most recent month. 
uh, that we have data for. Online shopping jumped 7.8% over the Thanksgiving weekend, more than analysts had anticipated. The sales of new cars, dishwashers, cruise vacations, jewelry, all things people tend to give up when they are watching their budget remain strong. Consultants keep anticipating a recession precipitated by the death of the consumer. Thus far, the consumer is staying alive. We'll talk about how the consumer is staying alive right now. People hate inflation, just not enough to spend less. This is one of the central tensions of today's economy in which things are going great, yet everyone is miserable. I think if everything was going great, people wouldn't really be miserable all the time, but... Um, I'm not sure. And in some ways, Americans have nobody to blame but themselves. So, I understand somewhat what she's saying, but now she's about to explain how we have other people to blame other than ourselves, unless you just look at the fact that we keep voting in terrible politicians that make terrible decisions all the time. Then you could say we could blame ourselves. But three years ago, the pandemic gnarled supply chains around the world. The, the government's response to the pandemic, gnarled supply chains around the, the world, I said that, not her, leading the shortages of many consumer goods. At the same time, the American government transferred roughly $1.8 trillion to households in the form of generous unemployment insurance benefits, an amped up child tax credit, stimulus checks, and a delayed or forgiven student loan payments. Less supply, more demand, it was a recipe for higher costs. She's right about that on the economic basis. We put a bunch of money in the people's hands. They weren't producing goods in the economy. And so there was a lower supply, but there was still the same demand or better demand when you look at the fact that some of the some of the bills that people were paying went away for, for some time, like rent in some places or your student loans uh, went away for quite some time. And so there was less supply and much more demand. Of course, that was going to create inflation. We were talking about that really early on. And of course, uh, some people, some economists thought that somehow this was not going to create inflation, which is weird. More recently, prices have been driven up, if more slowly, by the strong, strong labor market. The unemployment rate is as low as it ever gets and has been for some time with labor shortages in a number of sectors, air traffic control, education, retail, trucking, police and public safety, nursing, plumbing and electric. The tight labor market has forced employers to pay workers more, boosting wages, particularly at the lower end of the income spectrum. Interestingly enough, she pinpoints that the strong labor market is leading to higher pay for workers and is leading to higher costs, prices being driven up by higher pay for the workers, which I thought wasn't a real thing anyway. Real hourly earnings for workers in the 10th percentile of wage distribution went up more than 8% in the past three and a half years. So that's people at the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, let's go on to a sticker shock is real. And in surveys, people say they are trading down because of cost pressures, but in fact, they are spending more than they ever have. Even after accounting for higher prices, they're spending not just on the necessities, but on fun stuff, amusement parks, Uber Eats, People just have a lot of money on hand. More broadly, they seem to be less likely to change their purchasing habits in respect to price shifts, even when budgets are leaner. A raft of recent studies have found that American consumers have become less price sensitive in recent decades. Households are using fewer coupons. People are spending less time mulling over what to buy when they're shopping. Uh, let's see if anything else in here is uh, important enough to talk about. Uh, at the end, she says people want to blame Joe Biden for their bills. They want to accuse stores of gouging them. Though evidence for greedflation is scant. Once again, she puts in there that there's not much evidence for the idea that price gouging is leading to higher inflation. The, the, the article's dumb and the overall idea, especially the headline, is really dumb, which is what grabs people's attention. But another, she mentions that higher wages are leading to inflation and that there's not much evidence that price gouging is leading to inflation. Two actual not dumb things inside of this article. So it's, it's I, I don't want to go against the grain too hard here, but it's not as dumb as it could have been. The strange truth is that most people really are in, more, in a more comfortable position, even if they're not happy about it. It's not like a weak economy, stagnant wages, crummy consumer spending, and cheaper stuff would be better uh, after all. So 
I wanted to talk about one thing. How is the consumer so strong? She says, well, consumers are clearly doing okay. They're still spending. When you look at credit cards and other revolving plans from all these commercial banks, uh, you've got, let's see, April 2021, 738 billion sitting in uh, revolving accounts. In November 2023, uh, you've got a little over a trillion sitting in these revolving accounts. So a pretty big jump right there of uh, over 200 and I think if I do some quick math, like 280 billion, uh, if you, let me see, uh, carry the one, uh, something like that, over $200 billion added on to revolving credit cards. That's uh, just added on to people's credit cards. Now that doesn't mean that they're behind on their payments or that they can't make their payments or that they're going to be paying the 20% interest rate on everything. I've got a lot of money on credit cards monthly, but that's just because there's a lot of cards with good points out there. So I use credit cards to buy everything and get the points for it. I'm going to Peru in May and that, that flights for both my wife and I were, were purchased on, on points. And so using credit cards, and that's added to this figure, and it doesn't mean that I'm behind on the payments or anything like that. Uh, so when you look at before the pandemic, you had $850 billion. Then it dipped down to seven thirty eight, Then it went up to over a trillion. And so a lot of it has been coming in the form of credit cards. When you look at the uh, yearly changes, year-over-year -year changes, you see there's been a really big jump percentage-wise in changes from, uh, it's called change from a year ago, so your year-over-year -year change in the revolving credit balances. And there's been a really big jump uh, since the end of the pandemic or since the economy reopened where a lot of people have been putting a lot of money on, on credit lately. And if those balances get too big, if they can't make the payments, we could be in for a, a really big drop in consumer purchasing power assuming that a lot more people are using credit cards right now. And so that's one way that the consumer is pretty strong. Now, when she says inflation is your fault, we are in this situation, not, you know, the people on this podcast, you could say not through any fault of our own because we don't really vote for the people who push these uh, specific policies that get us into the situation. Uh, but a lot of people vote for people who push these policies. So maybe it is their fault for putting people in power that make these decisions. This chart right here is the M2 money supply, which is up by 34% uh, since the pandemic. And so of course, throwing all that money out into the economy and the GDP has not raised that much. So you got more money chasing a lower amount of goods. It's more, more goods, but it didn't grow by 34% over this amount of time. You also look at the, uh, the unemployment rate spiked up to 14 and percent during the economy. So people aren't producing goods at this time. They're not working, but they kept getting money from the government to go out there and purchase goods. And it's gone back down now. It's sitting at 3.9% right now. But those are people who were getting unemployment checks. We got the STEMI checks. We got the child tax credits, stuff like that. And all that money was chasing fewer goods, which created the crazy inflation that we had in the middle of uh, last year, I think is when it peaked. And so it's not just our fault. You can say maybe people are making some bad decisions or deciding to go ahead and buy things right now. Sometimes when you're in a high inflationary environment, as Milton Friedman would say, the only solution to high inflation is high living. So you might as well take that cruise right now because guess what? It's going to be a lot more expensive next year and it's going to be a lot more expensive the year after that. You might as well buy that new hoodie right now because it's going to be a lot more expensive next year if you keep waiting. So why, why wait when the price of things keeps going up all the time? That's a problem that you get into when you have high inflation. And so you can't just blame it on the people who are making some decisions Based on that, you know, my wife and I bought new furniture for the house. And one of the reasons that we decided to pull the trigger on it was the price just kept going up. And so what they want to spend three or four thousand dollars on some couches right now, or they want to spend four or five thousand dollars on some couches at the end of next year. So yeah, hey, Dan's got a good point. You might as well sign up to be a real libertarian right now. I think we just saw 
50 a 50 percent inflation spike in the price of being a real libertarian in the fed haters club and that could just keep going up and up you know you might as well do it right now because it's just going to go up even more you're waiting for the price to come down i'm sorry to tell you it's not going to come down okay that's because i have a monopoly on people being a real libertarian in the fed haters club okay so that article, you know, it, it talks about stuff being your fault and then it mentions cruises and it, and it mentions luxury items and it mentions jewelry. One really important thing to mention here is that those are all very small portions of the inflation number. If you were to look at all items, less food, you have 86% weight on those. So food being 14%, all items, less shelter. Those are 65% of the weight, meaning shelter is 35% of the weight and shelter keeps going up. I think there was still six or 7% inflation, uh, 6.7% inflation uh, year over year uh, for shelter costs. And that's roughly 35% of the inflation number. That's where a lot of this is coming from. You have to have food and you got to have shelter. If you don't have a car, you need to get a car. And cars, even used cars, got really expensive there for a while. They've, they've come down quite a bit. Uh, but some of these things are things that you have to have. And in fact, the things that you have to have are a much bigger weight on the inflation number than a bunch of those luxury items are. One of the things she mentioned was like, was like 0.1% of the number. And that's one of the big points she made. It has like no bearing on the number that we have right now. Uh, that we use when we're talking about it. So anyhow, that's the point on inflation. Is it your fault? Uh, I would place it more on the government, on the Fed, easily on the government and the Fed, and not so much all of the people who are just having to deal with the world that we live in and might just be trying to get things before they get even more expensive in the near future. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, we, we mentioned the tweet already a couple days next week. But I was looking at the CPI number. You know, Joe Biden's tweet. He says, let me be clear that any corporation that hasn't brought their prices back down, even as inflation has come down, it's time to stop the price gouging. See, when we look at the year over year inflation number and we see, well, it was 9.1 and right now it's 3 or 3.2 or whatever the actual number is right now, that tricks a lot of people into thinking that inflation came down by 65%. And the president and a lot of other people on the left have been doing as good a job as they can, trying to convince people that that's actually what that means. And it works if you're someone who never pays attention to this stuff. A better way of looking at it would be looking at the actual consumer price index, the actual CPI. Because right here on this chart, if you can see it, this red circle I've got right here, this is where inflation peaked at 9.1%. And if you were to listen to Joe Biden or any of the other talking heads on the left, they would say, well, inflation has come down so much. It's come down 65% since then. But you look at this consumer price index and the number has kept going up and up. In fact, since inflation peaked and inflation came down by 65%, prices have still risen by another 4.3%, at least using our consumer price index has at least gone up by another 4.3% since that time. Since inflation peaked, it has gone up another 4.3%. So looking at the actual consumer price index is a good way of visualizing what's happening with the prices. Yeah, they're still going up. Here's the peak right here. And guess what happens afterwards? It keeps going up.